guys welcome back to dragon exotics i hope you are ready for the big finale of legends turn to ash we are on chapter 14 and let's get started legends turn to ash chapter 14 adjusting all of us felt deep sorrow for vetus's sacrifice but what changed in our surroundings was a miracle the lava roaming through the land faded away the cracks in the ground sealed and turned into a bright green meadow. Flowers of all colors sprouted for miles and miles. The clouds fled the dusk sky. The wind turned to a calm breeze, and a tree shot up into the sky where the OSI headquarters had previously crumbled. The tree itself had replaced the building rubble, and its trunk alone was as round, stretching 40 feet long in diameter. White flowers surrounded the base of the tree, and vines covered a section of the tree like a door. The cuffs that bound Sierra to the ground faded away, and she slept with a peaceful smile after fading into unconsciousness. Beckett continued to sleep, but I wasn't sure whether it was because I knocked him out or if he was just tired. Birds chirped in the sky and the wind passed. Time was passing for everything but us. We were frozen in the past. With tears still welling in his eyes, Mikau stood and walked over to the tree. Mikau, I sniffled. Where are you going? There was no answer. But I watched as he carefully walked through the vines on the base of the tree. I didn't even notice that there was an entrance for him to walk through. Was the tree hollow? He's been in there for quite a bit now. I wonder if he's okay. Actually, he's not okay. His best friend just died. Still, though, what is in there? Why Vetus? Leaving us here to grieve over your death? I know you said not to be sad, but that's not an easy task. We had fun together, even if it was for a short time. At last, Mikau walked out of the tree with a sad smile, holding what looked to be an egg. The entrance to the tree sealed behind him, but he didn't even notice. Mikau continued to carefully walk toward us, staring at the precious egg in his hands. As he came closer, I recognized that the egg was a white and yellow scaled dragon egg. Unexpectedly, the egg wiggled and tiny cracks appeared on the top. We gazed in awe. As we huddled in a circle around the cracking egg, we held our breath in curiosity. First, a feathered tail poked out of the egg, and then two tiny arms and legs. The tiny dragon used his many feathered wings to break away through the breast of the shell, leaving just a small piece left on top of his snout. Here you go, little guy. Miko spoke softly as he picked off the shell covering the little dragon's head. The small, newly hatched dragon resembled Vetus, except he was golden and white and had even more feathers on him. The little dragon sneezed and peered at us with his huge crystal blue eyes. I see, so that was Vetus' plan, Zephyr said calmly. Asher hopped off Zephyr's back and scratched the baby dragon's neck. I don't get it, dude. He's so cute. Zephyr turned his head, annoyed by his change in attitude. Vetus saved a small amount of his life essence to reincarnate a version of himself. So, like, he's a mini Vetus? I smiled as I wiped the tears from my eyes and let out a small giggle. Welcome back, Vetus. Jacer jumped down as well and tilted his head in curiosity towards mini Vetus. So, can all dragons do this? Alzora brushed her nose against the tiny dragon and smiled. Not really. But there have been rare cases where a dragon with special abilities uses the last of our energy to recreate themselves. I wouldn't be surprised if this little guy acts just like Vetus. Of course, he won't have any memories of his past life, but he will make new ones with new friends. Ugi stepped forward and shyly gave his opinion. But where will, where will he go? Vetus was originally banished, like me, for being different, so why would Polri accept him now? Uki is correct. Vetus can't stay with the dragons, not if he wants to grow up living happy. Even if the elders did change their ways, the poor thing would grow up being looked down upon, Zephyr added. I couldn't help but jump in. 
Well, why can't Mikael raise him? A human raising a dragon? It's unheard of. Azora was stunned by my idea. Please let me keep him. I can take care of him. I was with Vitas long enough to learn what he likes and dislikes. He'll be safe with me, Mikael insisted. We may not have any other choice. If you truly feel up to the task, then that is up to you. Zephyr pointed his snout toward the clear sky in the superior way he usually did. Just know that dragons grow extremely quickly, and we have quite the temper. Well, not me, but most dragons, Oogie whispered to us humans. I bit my lips trying not to laugh as I pointed at Alzora and Zephyr, who were giving each other deadly stares. Mikau chuckled and held Mini Vetus in his arms. The little dragon had fallen asleep. Don't worry. I will take good care of him. Well, do you at least need a ride back to your home? Oogie knelt, waited for Jacer to hop back on his shell, and then signaled Mikau over. I would appreciate that. Thank you, Mikau said softly as he climbed onto Oogie's shell behind Jacer. Oh, are we leaving already? I asked as I pulled myself onto Alzora's back. I miss Vetus, Asher mumbled as he slowly crawled onto Zephyr. Before we took off, Alzora grabbed Sierra and set her next to me, using her highly maneuverable tail. Zephyr did the same with Beckett. Each of the dragons carefully drew back their wings and rose into the calm sky. I was the only one to look back at the peaceful land that was once plagued with chaos. It had been a long while since I had felt the gentle breeze of the wind. It was finally over. We'd saved the planet, and we could all finally rest. As we glided to Mikau's home, I stared at the scattered small clouds. Dazed, it was hard to believe that our adventure was finally over. Upon arrival at Mikau's home, Ugi was the only one to land while the rest of us hovered in the sky. As Mikau gently slid off Ugi's shell onto the lush grass below him, I smiled and waved. Make sure you take care of baby Vetus, okay? Mikau put his fingers to his lips and smiled back. He's in good hands. Don't forget, I still have to save the world from high taxes. So this isn't the last you'll see of me. Well, I sure hope not. I laughed as Ugi hopped back into the air and joined our group. We finally waved our last goodbye and flew into the orange sunset sky once more. So where to now? I asked out of curiosity. Alzora glanced back at me, unsure of what to say. Your home? That goes for both of you, actually. Jacer and Ugi are already on their own program, so they can do whatever they like. But we must drop you guys back off at home. What? Why? Okay, so I had to admit to myself that the question was pretty dumb, but I didn't feel like I needed to leave them just yet. Zephyr stopped to explain. Our mission has finished. Therefore, we don't need you bothersome humans with us anymore. Well, that was mean, Asher mumbled, poking the back of Zephyr's head. Elzora paused and then turned her direction westward. Mean or not, it's the truth. Fire scales. I guess I'll be seeing you back at the new dragon village. Agreed. See you then. All right, Chaser. I guess we should get going, too. Oogie sadly mumbled as he turned the other direction. Each of us flew in opposite directions, and I didn't have the energy to argue. The flight lasted through the night into the late next day, and we were silent. I mean, I get it. I don't want to be that one clingy person. But still, I will miss them. Even if they did let me stay, I would be surrounded by a bunch of potentially dangerous dragons who could care less about me. At least I get to go home to a family. Poor Asher has no one. He's just going to go back to his little house in New Zealand with his kiwis and hermit crab. We arrived at my house at midnight, and luckily my window was still unlocked, making an easy entrance. I stepped off Alzora blindly because of how dark it was. <laughs> You sure Sierra can stay at your house with no trouble? She asked. Well, I can just chain her down like before if it gets out of hand. She has nothing, not even Gideon's power, so I think she'll be fine. Thank you for everything, Elzora. I said as I picked up Sierra and held her with both hands. I heard a faint, yeah, be good little human. 
Then I felt a small gust of wind. I turned around only to see a dim light post flicker and dust swirl in the air. Azora had left just as quickly as she had arrived. I put on a rueful grin and shook my head. How did I know she was going to do that? I set Sierra down for a moment so I could open the window to my room. Carefully, I lifted her up and over onto an empty beanbag chair. Once I entered, I locked the window, turned on the light, and looked around my clean room. It seemed so small compared to everything I had been through. Though I was exhausted, I took a quick 10-minute shower and returned to my room in my warm pajamas. It felt nice to be clean again, but I was still sad. I missed my friends. Oh, right. Sierra should be waking up soon. I forgot that I gave her medicine to make her stay asleep for the whole flight here. I wonder if she's going to try to kill me again when she wakes up. That could be problematic. I sat on my bed and stared at her. I didn't know what to think or even say. Was she still my friend? Did she truly hate me? All I could think to do was hug her, but I didn't expect her arms to wrap around me and hug back. Sarah had finally woken up, and I had no clue what to say. I just stared at her blankly. Where am I? Are we having a sleepover? She asked with a clueless expression. Doesn't she remember? She couldn't have forgotten everything that happened, right? Is that even possible? Maybe I can play along. I guess I can see if she remembers the dragons. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. What's the last thing you remember doing? Like, what did you do yesterday? I asked a little too seriously. Well, that's a silly thing to ask. Hmm, let's see. Oh, right. I just got back from my family vacation. She recalled excitedly. Oh, I remember saying you were going on some kind of trip. I bet it was fun. Did you hang out with any dragons? I tried to ask without sounding too weird. It was really fun. Oh, come on, she giggled, obvious to the real situation. You are the only one crazy enough to believe in those creatures. She really doesn't remember anything. I guess it's for the best, though. She still thinks she just finished high school and that dragons don't exist. Well, good. She'll be safer that way. I just have to play dumb. I laughed a little at her comment and tossed her the remote to my TV. Yeah, well, something tells me you aren't planning on sleeping anytime soon. I'm sorry to do this to you, but I'm tired and I need a little sleep. No worries. I'll keep it on the low volume so I don't wake you up. Good night, she said happily. I didn't even bother to turn off the light or reply to her. I was so tired that I immediately fell into my dreams. The next morning, I walked Sierra home and took a walk by myself for a while, pondering life. I assumed that Beckett had gone back to Polroy with his memory of the whole ordeal erased as well. Both Beckett and Sierra were just Gideon's pawns to take over the world and were used as an attempt to stop us before we came too close. I was almost certain that Beckett was relieved to get home and be reunited with Dimna, his little furry companion. I was utterly bored for the next few days. I tried to pass the time by playing on my laptop, watching TV, and hanging with Sierra, but nothing changed the way I felt. Sorrow filled a section of my heart. As weeks passed, part of me began to question if my whole adventure was just a dream that I couldn't wake up from. Some days, I would drive myself over to the place where I first met Alzora, or shall I say, the place where she kidnapped me. Often, I would peer over the town with a blank mind and think about the fun times we all had. Weeks turned to months, and I was beginning to feel like coming to the Rocky Mountains was hopeless. Am I ever going to see them again? Alzora, Asher, Zephyr, Ugi, Chaser, even Mikau and Baby Vetus. I miss all of them so much. I miss Alzora and Zephyr's bickering, Oogie's stuttered apologies and paranoid complaints, Asher's nerdy video game talk, and Jacer's insane threats. I can't help but miss everything about every one of them. We didn't even leave with a goodbye. We just up and left. How am I supposed to live in a world without you guys? I couldn't help but begin to talk to myself. How could you just leave me like that? Seriously, I know you guys could be mean at times, but that was just cruel. 
Oh, come now. I don't think it was cruel whatsoever. After all, we convinced Paul Wright to let us explore the world doing whatever we please. What pleases me is to have a human by my side. So, Whisper, will you be my writer again? I knew that voice. I knew it so well that I frantically turned around and wrapped my arms tightly around Elzora's neck. You mean of course I will. I missed you so much. Wait, you said we. Does that mean... Hi! Asher yelled from atop of the smug, smiling Zephyr. What's up, long time no see? Jacer greeted, raising one hand. But why? I thought you liked living with the other dragons. My eyes almost burst with tears of joy. Too boring. I forgot my life kind of sucks. Elzora shrugged. Those foolish weaklings, they didn't even acknowledge that we helped save the planet from destruction either, Zephyr proclaimed. It was nice to know that Zephyr didn't just feel superior to humans. He acted superior to literally every being he met. We somehow managed to bring ourselves back together once again. I quickly climbed up Elzora's back and we rose into the never-ending sky, looking forward to the adventure that awaits ahead. Some people may see dragons as treasure-hoarding, fire-breathing beasts, but my friends and I know otherwise. Our dream is to explore the world, maybe fight some crime if we get the chance, with our quick-tempered, kind-hearted, loving friends in search of the rest of the missing dragons. The, that legend about us destroying everything in sight turned to ash just as Gideon reverted to mist. So here we are now, the destined ones, this time, we are destined for much, much more. Destined for adventure. A note from a nice pair. Dear reader, I hope you enjoyed listening to my story. I had so much fun on this trip, even if we were almost killed a couple times. I'm so happy that things turned out this way. Life is way more exciting when you can live it out to the fullest and serve justice to some bad guys along the way. I wish I could continue to write a little longer, but... You know who is trying to steal the pen. Greetings, tiny humans. I hope you all aren't as, well, annoying, persistent, no, as willful and determined as Whisper is. Is that how she spells her name? Whatever. I don't care. Where was I? She caused so much trouble and chaos on this trip. But if I must say, she ended up being helpful. To say the least, this has definitely been an exciting and entertaining trip. I think you have heard enough about me. Whether she likes it or not, I'm closing this letter and mailing it right now. Be good, my human friends, and live life to the fullest. Sincerely, Whisper and Elzora. The Memo from Fire Dear incompetent humans, I have one question and one alone for you. How do you write with these tiny pens? They do not fit in my talons properly. Oh, I suppose I should give my opinion on our little mission. Well, I have never traveled with a more idiotic group in my life. The nagging and annoyance were overwhelming. But if I must be truthful, I admire the kind and brave hearts that they hold deep within. I could go on forever writing about my superiority and handsomeness, but alas, my dear friend would like to say something. I think Whisper's letter idea was amazing. Hi, so I'm Asher, but I guess you already knew that. Sorry for hiding the fact that I'm a hacker. I just wasn't sure how to tell everyone. So my dudes, if you ever need a hacker, just let me know. This adventure has been so fun, and better yet, I made so many new friends. Okay, my dudes, I have to go. Zephyr just accidentally set Jacer on fire. At least, I hope it was an accident. Just know this, if you smile, you will be happy. So be optimistic and put on a big smile. Smile, because life is spectacular, and so are you. Stay happy, smile, and never stop moving forward. Faithful yours, Asher and Zephyr. Does this really need a title? Dear human friends, Hello, Uki speaking. Well, writing, but you know what I mean. This mission changed my life. I still can't believe I gained so many new friends. Is that bad? Sorry. I still have to keep a close eye on Jacer, or else he may make a mess that even I can't clean up. That boy will give me a heart attack. Oh, right, the letter. 
I don't really know what to say, but Jacer won't stop yanking my tail, so I will hand the paper to him. Hopefully, he will receive it in one piece. Why am I writing on a stupid scrap of paper? All right, opinion? Yeah, it was fun. After all, I did get to bash some heads in. Plus, I heard we get to catch even more people in our next mission. I can't wait to listen to their screams. Chicken and I can combine our lightning now, so that's pretty cool. Let's see what else to say. I hang out with Asher quite a bit, though Whisper thinks I'm a bad influence on him. Whatever that means. She can be such a drag sometimes. But at least she has good competition for everything we do together. Okay, I'm bored, so here's the last of my message. Carlosi, Sharonis, thanks for hanging with me when I needed some help. Oh, and thanks for the grub. Sorry I attacked the restaurant owner. P.S. I had nothing against him. I just felt like it. Regards, Jay Sarnoogi. I am still here. I cannot be vanquished. I am darkness itself. No matter how many of my pawns you may defeat, I will forever come after you, for this is my world. I linger in each of your hearts, and you can never throw me away. How long will this petty battle between light and darkness continue? Accept your fate. I will not die. And that concludes Legends Turn to Ash. I hope you guys enjoyed. I definitely enjoyed writing it uh, when I was younger, I guess. It was definitely more than a few years ago, and I was happy to finally get this audiobook released, whether, I guess, you enjoyed it or not. But it is out there. I am working on the second book, hopefully to be a big improvement on the first, and we'll see how that turns out. But again, thank you guys for listening, and if you guys stuck through chapter 1 to chapter 14, thank you so very much. Your dedication is appreciated. And with that, I look forward to seeing you with my other educational videos, and see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye!